This is the story of the Pascagoula, one of the last significant rivers in the United States free to flood and recede with the seasons. It is hard to believe almost all other rivers in the country have been altered to one degree or another. But here in the Pascagoula Basin is the largest river remaining still possessing all of its majesty, all of its beauty, force, and fragility, its waters flowing with the rhythms of nature. Thunderclouds rise on the horizon. Water evaporates from the Gulf of Mexico and then falls back as rain along the banks of the Pascagoula. Rain, then flood, and then the waters recede. It is a part of a vast life cycle. We return to Stalking the Hunter. The setting is surreal. The hunters appear on the scene like aliens from a distant planet. Men in darkness, in the swamp, wielding a primitive weapon built with space-age technology. Even the creatures have an other-world quality. You're watching Venice After the Storm with Dave Maynard. Welcome back to Venice, Louisiana. Behind me, another graphic scene of Katrina's wrath, a pile of shrimp boats, eight or 10 just piled up on each other. But the shrimpers here are telling me, shrimping is fantastic. Big shrimp, lots of shrimp. And as fishermen, we know lots of shrimp means great fishing. Keep him up, Patrick, out of the net. That's right, too. It's a jack attack, and if you're looking for a reliable target, all you have to do is find a shrimp boat. And that's not difficult with record catches of shrimp since the hurricane. At one point I decided those limitations are not necessary. I will simply follow my own heart, as it were, my own intuition, and uh, let's see what happens. That's the, that's the Templar. That's the, big, that's the key to the seventh, seventh Golden Age. That is the, the whole thing of the Seventh Golden Age. That's the structure of it. The Seventh Golden Age is what they call in the Bible the Millennium, or the thousand years of peace, during which time a man will uh, perceive himself as one with other men. There'll be no more prejudice. There'll be no discrimination. He will see himself as one with the other species in, in the galaxies both the physical and the non-physical species in the galaxy. The project we're working on today is uh concerning the turtle excluder devices. We're doing certification tests for new designs. Uh, they're called, uh, acronym is TEDS. Some uh, critics or writers have said that, you know, sometimes they see my work bridging the gap between, you know, my world and, and maybe their world in, in some way. And maybe that's, you know, and sometimes I feel that way. And maybe that's um, what's happening. This will be about, I judge, two months ago. My wife and I are boxing, right? <laughs> well, to be honest, it's not really boxing because we don't wear gloves or any of that sissy shit. <laughs> so normally what happens with us, the first couple of rounds, we always want to keep it light. We just want to get in there, get loose, get a good sweat going. You want to get the kinks out and get your distance down, right? No, two minutes into the first round, bang! 
she nails me. I go slamming up against the wall of the shower, because that's where we like to slam. The I recommend that it's a nice small area you can't run and hide. It's more of a Hertz Hagler effect. Now. What a psychological theorist would tend to say is that well, the humor of a culture tends to be a mirror image or reverse. The Pascagoula River system is the largest and one of the last free-flowing river systems in the lower 48 states. From the headwaters near the foot of the western Appalachian Mountains to the Gulf Coast, there are no man-made structures restricting its movement or the movement of the creatures that live within its tea-colored world. Our clientele is actually a, a mix. We sell from a, an age range of 18 to basically 80. It's actually people who want conversational pieces in their home, want something a little bit different that you're not gonna see in everybody's house, your neighbor's not gonna have it, and just people that really want something different. We're in the dining room now. This basically started our whole decision process on going with this type of furniture. This is from Indonesia. Um, it's large, um, the color was gray, and unique, uh, handmade. Nothing is perfect, they're all different, um, but gave us a casual comfort feeling, which is what we wanted when we were entertaining. Now in the breakfast nook, we have these chairs that are from India. They're uh, camel, and it, another, again, a comfort is what we were looking for, but stylish and unique, different. Um, that's what drew us to this type of furniture. It seems timeless. Cliff dwellings blend into the steep wall of rock, echoing the ancients. Nature's ballet, art in motion, best describes these strongly muscled creatures that propel themselves effortlessly through their emerald environment. Their grace can be compared to a world-class figure skater, their acceleration to blurry speed to a high-performance race car. Their approach brings on a thrill beyond words, the awe of being in the presence of one of nature's perfect designs, a design that has remained virtually unchanged since the age of dinosaurs, and the rush that comes with knowing of their unpredictable nature. Tropical forests, the lungs of planet Earth, the home of this world's richest and most diverse collection of plant and animal life. A lot of people who stop, uh, you know, when we're flying, maybe pull over on the side of the road. Uh, if they've seen us for the first time, they're probably wondering what in the world, you know, kind of contraption that is.
hundred Sierra Madres of Mexico that Tara Umara Indians still live as their ancestors lived, in hand-hewn log houses with mud-packed floors or in caves during the cold winters. 